let's uh, let's start this video here. Alrighty. Hello everyone and welcome to BHC Studios. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at the GFX 50S Mark II with the new-ish 20 to 35 millimeter lens here. And I just happen to have the X-T5 with the 10 to 24. And I thought these two would be kind of a, a fun comparison. It's not a real comparison. We'll go over why someone would pick something like this and why someone would pick something like this. Uh, this is my kit. This is Fujifilm's kit. Why would one pick one or the other? Ultimately, image quality here, uh, size and weight and portability over here, as well as pricing, you know, it's a big difference. This is more than twice the price of this kit over here, but we'll go over the details. Specifically though, let's talk about aspect ratio. We'll talk about cropping. We'll talk about like why you would want to go for even 50 or 40. I think a lot of us will be happy at 26 megapixels. So let's uh, start this video by talking about specs of both of these cameras. All right, so let's start with the um, uh, GFX. 50s mark ii and so this is the latest iteration of the 50 megapixel series of fujifilm gfx cameras uh, it's using the x uh, the gfx 100s chassis but the original gfx 50s sensor in here and this has ibis this has an older sensor but a newer body and so uh, if you are trying to get into digital medium format this is probably kind of where you would start but the issue is you can get a 40 megapixel APS-C centered camera now if you're just talking about just straight up resolution these are reasonably similar now this sensor here it's 50 megapixels but at a 4x3 aspect ratio or this is a 40 megapixel at a 3x2 aspect ratio so if you're going to equalize it meaning if you crop this to 3x2 because for me i don't like 4x3 aspect ratio so if i would crop a uh, 50 megapixel image on a gfx 50s uh, to a 3x2 you're actually going to get about a 45 megapixel so between these two in terms of just straight up resolution there's only going to be a 5 megapixel difference so if you're just thinking about resolution you're not thinking about anything else, you're not thinking about ecosystem, you're not thinking about, uh, you know, upgrading to a, a 100 megapixel version of this or as this goes to 150, 200 and up. And APS-C, you know, might go up to maybe 60 or 80 in the next 5 to 10 years. But, you know, this is always going to out-resolve this in terms of uh, uh, future-proofing, right? So if you want ultimate resolution, then obviously you're gonna start at this. This is the top end APS-C sensor, and this is the entry level medium format sensor camera. So uh, again, straight up resolution, there isn't a huge difference. So let's kind of go over uh, the differences between these two cameras. All right, uh, maybe, is this, is this, um, let me just turn this off here. Let's just move this, let's just move this other way. Okay, let's just go with, uh, in terms of the sensor, actually let's just, Let's just look at the sensor here. So let's pull the lenses off here. So APS-C, this is a 24 by 16 millimeter. And so you are getting 384 square millimeters of surface area on this sensor, three by two. Versus this sensor here, can you see that? Look at that, look at that. Look at the size difference between these two sensors here. Look at that, look at that, and look at this. Now that's a pretty big difference in size. Uh, four by three aspect ratio, you are getting basically a 44 by 33 millimeter uh, a size sensor with a surface area of 1,452 millimeter square. So you are getting uh, basically triple, 3.8 times the surface area of this sensor. Now, as I was mentioning before, this is a four by three aspect ratio sensor. So even if we were to crop this sensor and only use a three by two aspect ratio, you're still getting a 44 by 29 millimeter of usable uh, sensor if you're gonna always crop it down to a three by two, which is still gonna be uh, 1,276 square millimeters. So you're still gonna, you're still getting 3.3 times more surface area with the GFX 50S. Even though in terms of megapixels, as I said, if, you, if you're only gonna use it in three by two, there's only a five megapixel difference. But if you just look at the sensor, that is a huge sensor size difference. At the same time, 
because this, this, the surface area of the sensor is much larger, you're gonna, there's a lot of advantages. You get better high ISO performance, you're gonna get better micro contrast, just better overall image quality. If you punch in on the images taken with this sensor, so forget 100 megapixels, even at 50, you're punching this in, images are beautiful. You're gonna, if you're just, if you're just about resolution, then bang for your buck, obviously this little tiny sensor here, you're gonna get amazing resolution, but if you're looking at micro contrast, you're looking at overall image quality, color rendition, things like that, you, I mean, you, you're gonna definitely see the difference between these two, but at the same time, look at the size of the lenses. So this is a 20 to 35, which works out to be about a 16 to 28 millimeter, and here, is the 10 to 24 lens and this here is going to be basically a 15 to 36 millimeter lens so if you add these two together here we go let's just look at the the size and weight here these two together is about the weight of just the body of this alone and so there's quite a quite a bit of a, a of a size and weight difference but as well as price so the uh, price of the gfx 50s mark ii right now is on sale from four thousand down to 3200 so that's actually a pretty good price 3200 for this body right here and then the lens is $2500 where the X-T5 body alone is $1700 and this lens here is on sale right now for 850 so together this kit here is 2550 and this kit here right now from B&H is 5700 so you're paying also twice the price and so we're talking almost twice the weight twice the price are you getting twice the image quality? Uh, I wouldn't say so. It's not twice the image quality, but again, this is the entry bottom level medium format, and this is the top of the line APS-C. Also, there is gonna be a technology difference uh, because this is the fifth generation processor. This has the fourth, fourth generation processor. Both of them use the MPW-235 battery here so you're getting the same size battery but you're gonna get more efficiency with the new sensor but as well as the camera is much smaller so in terms of shot to shot this is gonna be a more efficient system here but in terms of sensor this is uh, both these are CMOS sensors but this is backside illuminated and I don't want to go into detail about the technology but basically they get the the back end of the sensor they flip it the other way so a lot of the wiring is in behind the sensor so you actually do get better image quality faster throughput and this not only is it three point eight times bigger, so almost four times bigger. This is not backside illuminated, so you got much slower sensor readout speeds. That's why the electronic shutter is really bad on this. If you don't hold this really still as you're taking your image, and once you press the shutter, and you have to kind of pause for a little bit, or else you're gonna get that jello effect. And so rolling shutter is not great on this compared to the 26 megapixel sensor, and definitely against the X-H2S stack sensor, but compared to this, this performance is way better than this one when it comes to sensor readout speeds. But as well, this has both phase and contrast detect. This sensor is only contrast detect. Now, if you get the GFX 100 or the GFX 100S, that is a uh, CMOS backside illuminated with phase and contrast detect. But with this 50, 50 megapixel sensor, you don't get phase detect autofocus and you don't get it backside illuminated construction. So uh, very different, like this sensor is probably at least 10 years old or even older. And this sensor here is just brand, brand new. So even in terms of tech, you're getting much different tech, better processor, better design sensor, very high resolution, but obviously just the, the basic size of the sensor is gonna still give you better image quality over here. Now, as I was mentioning about uh, image quality, um, if we do just, we're just looking at straight up resolution and not image quality, cause you know, there are smartphones that can out resolve both of these, right? The thing is like a hundred megapixel smartphone. So in terms of resolution, yes, that smartphone potentially can out resolve these cameras, but then also there's the quality of the optics, the quality of the, of the processor, and as well as, because it can resolve 100 megapixels, how good is the quality of each pixel? Because each pixel has a little micro lens on top of it, and it's the the you know a smartphone sensor is like the, the tip of my tip of my pinky here, right? So how good of a quality image 
can you get on a smartphone? Not very much. And so same with these things. We're just going to talk about resolution, 40 megapixels versus 50 megapixels. Uh, if we were to shoot at a 3 by 2 this is a native aspect ratio of the X-T5. You're going to get a 7728, but you know what? Let's just, let's just show this. Here, here's my notes here, right? So X-T5 at 3 by 2 aspect ratio, 7728 by 5152. You're actually getting a little bit under 40 megapixels. It's actually 39.8 megapixels. Now the GFX 50S, it is 28% bigger at 4x3 and the actual pixel count is 8256 by 6192 which works out to actually be a 51 megapixel image but let's just make them the same aspect ratio so if you were going to shoot the GFX 50S Mark II at 3x2 so it's 8256 same width this way here but in terms of height we have to crop it a little bit right because it's 4x3 and now we're copying down the 3x2, it's 5504, which works out to be a 45 megapixel image. So that's what I was saying how, you know, 39.8, 45, it's about a 5 megapixel difference when it comes to resolution if we're shooting at the same aspect ratio. And as you crop it down, let's just pick something like an X-Pan, 65 by 24, it's on the X-T5, you're getting basically a 22 megapixel image versus a GFX 50S. 65 24 x pan aspect ratio you're getting a 25 megapixel image so it works out to be basically it's a, you're getting 13 percent more pixels on the gfx 50s shooting at the same aspect ratio because as you can see all throughout the width of the sensor of the amount of pixels 8256 versus 7728 that's basically what the differentiator is for me 16 by 9 is typically how I like shooting my images and so on the XT5 you're getting a 33.6 megapixel image on the GFX 50S at 16 by 9 you're getting a 38 megapixel image when you make that crop and so here are the other numbers that I showed before APS-C at 24 by 16 approximately you're getting 384 square millimeters with a GFX uh, at native 4433, you're getting 1452 square millimeters of surface area. And so it's quite a bit bigger. It's 3.8 times more area. But if we we're again going to crop that GFX sensor to 44 by 29, which gives us a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, it's still 1276 millimeters, which worked out to be 3.3 times more surface area. So with more surface area, you're going to get better noise performance. You're going to get better micro contrast, better, better overall image quality, but at the same time, what you, what you do lose is because the sensor is so big, the entire shutter cycle, either electronic shutter or mechanical shutter, is much slower. Everything from autofocus is going to be slower, shot to shot is going to be slower, everything about shooting with this is going to be slower over this. In terms of the image quality, how much better is the image quality? I mean, that's kind of subjective. You can punch in. Some people don't mind. You know, like in terms of micro contrast, you can in post increase the micro contrast. In post, if you're getting more noise with this camera, you can kind of, you know, reduce the noise and yet still bump up the details. And so there are times, especially when it's daylight outside and everything is bright, you're shooting at base ISO for both of these things. The image quality is actually really good on the X-T5. But if you're looking for ultimate image quality, both optically as well as in terms of the sensor, because you know eventually the GFX 50S, if there is going to be a Mark III version, it's going to match the processor of this one here. So processing power is going to be the same. So basically it's the optics and the sensor. And overall, I've noticed that the optics on the GFX system is better than the than the APS-C series. Although the new Fujiluxes, the 18, the 23, and the 33, is actually the image quality is better than the first generation GFX 60 and the 45 millimeter. Those lenses are great, especially matched up to the 100 megapixel. But if you look at the new Fuji Luxes on the APS-C, those are just beautiful, beautiful images. And so, uh, you know, which one are you going to pick? Well, I would say if you are going to be traveling, you want to save money, you want to save on weight, you want to shoot faster, shot to shot, and you've been happy with APS-C. That I, but you also want some resolution. You want 40 megapixels so that you can, as I was showing you, if you are going to be cropping to, let's say, the X-Pan uh, 65 by 24 aspect ratio, and you want 22 megapixels because you're going to print large, um, then the X-T5 is pretty darn good. But you're not going to get the, you know, you're just looking at it going, again, 13% difference in terms of overall pixels. It's not just a 13% better image. 
because the sensor is so much larger on the digital mini format, you're gonna get higher IQ, but with all those caveats, short, slower, autofocus, slower shot to shot, more expensive, more weight and things like that. So for me, for the longest time, I've always wanted digital medium format. I wanted to play with higher resolution images. For me, I'm happy with the X-T5 and 40 megapixels, and I'm gonna personally skip the gateway entry level GFX. Now, the GFX 100S, now that's a completely different story. When you look at the resolution of that, it's still, pixel density to spare because twice the megapixels, but remember, this is four times the sensor area of this. So if you double the megapixels, the, in terms of the pixel density, this will still have half the amount of pixel density, meaning there's still a lot of space between pixels as well as each pixel is larger, so it's the better light gathering capabilities. And those little micro lenses that are on top of every pixel, definitely you're gonna get better micro contrast and better overall image quality. There is also a difference. This uses an X-Trans sensor. This uses a Bayer uh, color filter array. So uh, for its size, this punches above its weight class. But again, if you're getting 3.8 times more surface area, that's something that's pretty hard to overcome and just compensate by using software. So in the end, if you are gonna be shooting landscape, you're gonna be doing product photography, and you wanna just kind of start building up a system, I say go GFX. This is the way to go if you are doing that type of photography. But if you're into travel photography, you want speed, you want uh, lightweightness, you want compactness, you want to be able to buy, you know, if you want a full GFX kit, you're probably gonna be aiming at, so let's say two bodies and three or four lenses, you're hitting close to 20 grand or more. Where with the X series, kit if you want a full system two bodies three lenses you can easily be under six or seven thousand dollars based on based on whatever lenses let's say xt5 and a prosumer body you got uh, one zoom lens like this or two zoom lenses and one fast prime easily you're going to be less than half the price of something like this and so i have fun shooting with the gfx 50s i'll insert photos of pictures i've taken with this kit here and as well this new 20 to 35 if i was going to go gfx i would go with this lens i love the 23 millimeter f4 lens but basically for this i think this lens is actually uh, smaller and lighter about the same size but lighter than the 23 f4 I mean, this is constant F4 all the way across, right? And so this is a more versatile lens and carrying this around, although it's big, considering it's a digital medium format, getting 18 to 28, you can shoot street with this. I wouldn't recommend it. I pulled it off, but it's, it's kind of, it's a challenge unless you really like challenges, but this is great for landscape on a tripod, but the image quality of this is just mind blowing. Even if, again, there's only gonna be a five megapixel difference shooting at the equivalent three by two aspect ratio. As you punch in, you can really see the image quality difference between these two. Although the resolution on, on APS-C being able to get right up to 40 megapixels and as well you can use that app where you can get up to 160 megapixels using this using software from Fujifilm that actually is pretty darn impressive and so thank you so much for watching let me know you know which way would you go if money was no object would you go GFX 50s mark 2 with the 20 to 35 especially if you're a landscape photographer or would you go XT5 with the 10 to 24. Thank you again so much for watching and happy shooting.